What's up everybody, Michael here. I hope you are doing great. Today we're gonna have a look at the newly announced PaboTube AT7X from Nanlite. It's a budget-friendly and lightweight RGBWW tube light aimed at modern content creators and has a temperature range of 2700 up to 7500 Kelvin and a full range of RGB colors. With a built-in battery, a lot of effects and even built-in pixels that you can individually control, you've got to ask yourself. How the hell does this only cost $95? As soon as you hold one of these in your hands, you can definitely tell where money was saved. The build quality of these is not nearly as good as let's say from the premium series the 30X of the Pava tubes from Nanlite. These tubes here are pure plastic and that is intentional to cut weight and to make them smaller. The 7X are not meant to be thrown around and even though they have the perfect form factor for it, I would kinda advise against a lightsaber fight with these. It's just... Ah, it's fragile. But on the other hand, these tubes here, they only weight 280 grams. I mean, look at this. Oh my god, this is like a pen. Oh yeah, not, not throwing around. As you can see, they have a grip on the bottom and also a standard quarter inch mount and three buttons to control everything. And they have a USB-C port. The 7X has a built-in 2200 milliampere battery, but this battery will only last about an hour if you use it at full brightness, give or take. And if the weather's cold, this battery will go down pretty damn fast. But as I mentioned before, you have a USB-C plug that powers the whole thing and you can plug in pretty much any power bank or like a small Vima battery. In my case, I have the FX Line Nano 1 and you can run these tubes off of these batteries forever. The downside of this design is that the USB-C port and the standard quarter inch thread for putting it on a tripod or using it with a floor stand, they're next to each other. And if you use a floor stand, you're gonna block your USB-C port and gone are your infinite powering options. If you're a purist and you refuse to use any apps, then you're missing out on the full potential of the PavaTube AT7X. Sure, we have very basic control on the bottom of the tube, but what really gets the party started is the Nanlink app. To connect it with the app, you just press all the three buttons at the same time until it starts flashing blue, as you can tell. Boom, and then you add the fixture. Found it, got it. Setting up the fixture. I mean, well, what are you exactly setting up? All the fixtures on this planet are just one? As usually, I'm just joking, this takes a couple seconds. Ah, here we go. It's fully on. We're connected. And boom, we get to play. Inside of the app, you get control over CCT, HSI, and so on and so forth, but you also can control the 16 pixels that are inside of this tube. Now, for everybody who is not familiar with pixels, this pretty much means that you can configure individual parts of this LED to do certain things. Let me show you an example of this. Uh, inside of the pixel effect, I go to scroll, and one scenario that you could mimic is that you are inside of a car, and you have uh, the outside going by on the sides and then you can mimic something like this. As you can see, uh, this is like uh, obviously out of frame. Something like that. That would be a really cool scenario. You can do a lot more. You can go up to four pixels. You can do all kinds of things, combine these effects, play with the direction and symmetry and color and so on and so forth. So you can go to town and go pretty ham and I think that's what's super exciting about this pixel effect. Normally, the connection between app and fixture is pretty stable, but in case it breaks or uh, it disconnects, you have to delete the fixture inside of the app, connect this to a power source, reset it and reconnect it. And that can be a bit annoying. Like, as you can tell right now, fixture is disconnected. And if this happens, this is really annoying. But usually I would say the Nanlink app is pretty stable at the current time and I'm sure they will release a firmware update that will make the connection between the 8T7X and the app even better. The PavaTube 7X can do pretty much everything that the PavaTube 30X can do, which is much more expensive. Obviously the light output is nowhere near the more expensive tube and I measured it using the Seconic 800C. The 
quality of light is really good, especially for this price point. That is actually kind of surprising because usually the budget friendly or cheap LEDs have a tendency of not being very color accurate. One of the key differences besides the output and build quality of the 30X series and the 7X series is that the 30X series can be used in frame, sure but they can also be used out of frame, whereas the 7X, they are pretty much something that you probably should use in frame. The lower output of the 7X doesn't really matter too much if you use the fixture in frame, because if you turn up the power on the 30X, for instance, all the way up to 100 and you have a color like blue, oftentimes this will result into the light being completely blown out and like white instead of blue, let's say for example, because the 30X is just so bright. To come to a conclusion, I think the PowerTube AT7X was a really clever move from Nanlite and makes high quality LED tube lights affordable for pretty much everyone. The pricing is really fair in my opinion. For a two kit of PowerTube 30X, you can buy yourself 10 of these. Let's say for everyone who is in the music video business, for example, this is an opportunity to get the very trendy tube look on a budget without any quality compromise. If you like this video, it would mean a lot to me if you liked, subscribed, or left a comment down below what you think about the PowerTube AT7X from Nanlite. Until then, guys, keep grading, and I will see you in the next video. Cut! And cut. I'm <laughs> sorry.